Truth Unveiled here and today we're going to be following up with the video that we've done covering Jerusalem and the real Yasharal Israel location and this time we're going to be using narration and going over some of the maps once again. But before we do that I just wanted to share this article with you sharing real prophecy and that's when it comes to so-called South Africa and the land reform and the land expropriation. And as you see right here how the president is promising to accelerate the land reform there and has said as of Sunday to symbolically hand back the land to a community of so-called black South Africans who were forcibly removed from it under apartheid and promise to accelerate land reform quote we are making history and celebrating the return of land today we are writing the historic injustice and returning the land to its rightful owners and this is something that we definitely need to pay attention to not only in so-called south africa but in namibia and other parts when it comes to the land expropriation and the land return as well as the land reform now, for whatever reason, if you have not seen the documentary that was done on this a couple of days ago, I highly recommend you do, but we'll be briefly going over some of the things from it, as well as the maps from it. Now, again, this is new for everyone. This is new for myself, too. But as you have seen in the documentary, this has taken years worth of research. And pretty much during the time that I wasn't uploading as much, well, you can imagine where my time has been when it comes to searching these ancient maps. However, what this video will also do is prayerfully answer some of your questions about this because again this is new for everyone but the main question now becomes well if we know the truth but how do we really know it's truly in this location it could be in West Africa it could even be in Central Africa around the Kenya region how do we really know that it's truly in so-called South Africa well one way to know for sure is based on his word based on prophecy and I know there are a few other videos out there well what if it's in the Philippines or what if it's in South America however there are a few requirements the first one is that Beersheba must be present as a town as we've gone over in Brashid or Genesis chapter 26 there has to be a town called Beersheba that is nearby this area that's the first requirement the second requirement for any place that's claiming to be the real script location the second one is that it must be a desolation as we've gone over throughout the video and extensively that there can really be nothing around it it has to be a desert so that's the second thing the third thing is that other nations must dwell there and be present in the area and the fourth thing is that the land has to have been parted or divided according to the prophecy of you all or Joel chapter 3. So based on that prophecy alone, it cannot be the Philippines and it most certainly cannot be South America because those lands were not divided by seven European nations as opposed to Africa. So like we said, the first requirement is that Beersheba must be present and must be a town according to his word, according to Genesis chapter 26. Well, in the first map, we do see Beersheba right here along with Jerusalem. And then we also went over in the video about Bethany too and how Bethany is a scriptural town. Then we talked about how the region and area must be desolate, meaning there can be nothing there, meaning the desert has to surround it. And again, the question becomes, well, how do we really truly know that it's in so-called Southern Africa? How do we really truly know that? Well, take a look at this from Google Maps because I put in the town Beersheba or Beersheba. And just as a reminder, so you can see it clearly, here is Namibia right here, and this is so-called South Africa, along with Lesotho, Swaziland, Botswana, Zimbabwe, and Mozambique over here. So if you put in Beersheba, which is the real Beersheba right here, you'll get it towards the southern Namibia region. And if you zoom in a little bit, you'll be able to see it. Now, what I find very interesting and suspicious indeed about this is when you take a look at Google Maps, and when you put it on the terrain, this is what you actually start to see now Jerusalem on the ancient maps would be in this area towards the southeastern part of Namibia just before you get to South Africa with the Orange River that divides both Namibia and South Africa on the southern border however what's interesting is when you take a look at this map of Africa 
you start to notice some things about it. The first thing is that right here throughout sub-Saharan Africa, the land is pretty much green and luscious and filled with a ton of rainforest if you go like towards the Congo and everything like that. But towards the northern part, you have the Sahara. So towards regions like Sudan and Chad and everything, you see it's vast with the Sahara Desert. And then down here, it's mostly green. However, the only area in southern Africa that's really filled with desert is of course the Kalahari which is in this area of Botswana, Namibia and some of South Africa and the Namib desert that's towards the western side. However when you go up though like pretty much from Tanzania onwards so these nations like Rwanda, Burundi, Congo, uh, Angola even and some of Zambia you see that there's not really a whole lot of desert. Southern Africa this is the only place outside of the Sahara where it's majority desert. It almost looks as though this area should be green and these regions should be shaded green just like these regions over here are shaded green and filled with lakes and rivers and stuff. But this is the only area that's not. Why is that the case? Anyway, that's just something to think about when we're actually taking a look at this, but this is another map that shows Beersheba right here, the second map from the video, and you see Rehoboth up here. This is towards the middle of Namibia, and then this town right here is actually known as Gibeon, and we'll talk about that in a moment. There's the Kalahari Desert, and here's Bethany right here, so we see three scriptural towns, and that's the other thing about this region is that there are a ton of scriptural towns, as you saw from the documentary. And we'll go over some of them like right now but here is Beersheba and again according to Brashith Genesis 26 we read that Isaac Yatsakak that what he went down from from Rehoboth up to Beersheba this way so he went this way and traveled in journey could he have traveled here because again this right here is named Beersheba and then the second map right here that we show, we have Jerusalem up here. And as you can see, this is the Orange River that separates Namibia from South Africa right here. And then you see Jordan in this map right here. And you also see a town called Hepzibah. And you see a second Bethany and a second Beersheba. If you also look carefully and closely, you also see the town called Pella right here, and we've gone over that too. Now it's just interesting how the Jordan is shown right here in this area, and then Hepzibah, Bethany, Beersheba, and Jerusalem. Now another requirement like we've talked about according to scripture, according to Leviticus 26.32 specifically, is that other nations must be there too, because other nations would dwell in our land and would be astonished by it. Well, according to statistics, when it comes to Europeans who dwell in Africa specifically, you'll see that out of the total population of 5.7 million, you'll see that nearly 5 million of them dwell where? In so-called South Africa. And we've talked about that and the significance of that when it comes to apartheid and what apartheid was really about and the truth behind it. And then right after is Angola right here. And then Namibia. So Namibia comes in number three with South Africa as number one. I just find that very interesting and suspicious indeed. So that really rules out places like Kenya and even potential places like Western Africa because again other nations have to be dwelling there and like we talked about it's in the land of Canaan so according to Jubilees chapter 10 well that means Africans have to be dwelling there too Canaan's descendants. Here is another map from 1870 that shows Jerusalem right up here with Pella right below it and again the Orange River that separates Namibia from uh, South Africa today as we know it. And as we pointed out in the documentary, the Jerusalem that you see today, the one in scripture could have been a much bigger region than what's shown on this map right here. So it's very important to keep that in mind. This is where Jerusalem would be on a map today in Namibia that comes from the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, as you can see right here, right at the southeastern tip of Namibia. Now again, when you actually look at this on the terrain, and even if you look at it on Google Maps, you'll see and notice that it's pretty much all desert there and that there is absolutely nothing there.
Another interesting thing to note is how this region, South Africa itself, is the name of it. How every other nation in Africa has a distinct name, but this one is named South Africa. Very interesting and suspicious indeed. Now, in the documentary itself, we've gone over and talked about the real true scriptural location of Har Sayanaya, commonly known as Mount Sinai, which is in western Saudi Arabia around Jabal al Laws. Now, it's interesting because when you go from that point, we know that the people of scripture had to encounter giants. And in the video itself, we've talked about giants when it comes to giants actually being in Central Africa, according to maps. And this is a map from 1592 and it shows a giant right here and it also shows the town of Amon then we showed you a few maps of Agag in the video and Agag is referring to the Amalekites according to 1 Samuel 15 and a few other places like Numbers chapter 13 because we know that the people of scripture had to encounter giants and that those giants were removed and were destroyed and again we pointed out the truth about so-called meteors and craters and stuff how those are large hailstones and this is something that we're still doing more research on and still uh, looking into when it comes to so-called craters so like the Ngorogoro crater in Tanzania and a few others what were those places before and were those really large hailstones and evidence of giants and of course your satanic elite are trying to hide and play cover-up when it comes to that this is an ancient map from 1596 and if you look carefully you'll see a gog right here and this is the region around the Congo and uh, Angola that region right there and if you look also you'll see the town called Herod or Herod along with Nazareth towards the Gabon region that's near the equator we went over Numbers chapter 13 verse 32 specifically that talks about a land eating up its inhabitants that the children of Yasharal or Israel had to encounter. And then note how this map right here from the 1790s says what men eaters and it's in the same region of Agog which would be present day Angola over here and then Tanzania over here along with Mozambique down here. And then we also showed you this map from 1635 that shows a lot of scriptural locations actually because it shows a Gog down here that's near Mozambique and it shows a Gog up here that would be towards the Congo and Zambia region. You see Herod right there or Herod which would be towards the Congo Angola regions up there and you see Nazareth towards Gabon up there. The reason that's so important is because knowing where the giants are according to scripture helps us to be able to pinpoint and decode the map. Again, the journey took 40 years. Now this is something else I meant to mention in the documentary. However, when Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 2 talks about an 11 day journey, and actually we're just going to go there. And the purposes of doing this is to get rid of and expose these lies and expel them once and for all because some people try to say, oh, well, it was actually an 11 day journey from Mount Sinai to the land. However, when you take a look at translations and take a look at the word itself, you'll see that there was a sinister agenda by your translators and your wicked translators who did all of this in order to justify the fake Jerusalem that we've also exposed. Because when you go to this chapter, Deuteronomy 1-2, that talks about the 11 days, you'll see that there are parentheses. Why is that so important? The parentheses indicate that this passage was added and that it was not in the original manuscript. So yes, this verse, this entire verse was actually added to the scriptures. It was not there. It was not in the original manuscripts. And again, you need two or more witnesses to establish every single matter. Here we are in the KJV that says it too about Deuteronomy chapter 1. And again, if you see any time that there's parentheses, that means that it was added. It was not in scripture. Not only that, but if you see words that are italicized or anything, that was not in the original manuscripts of scripture either. It was added by the translators adding and taking away. The reason I need to bring that up is because it dispels and gets rid of all of the 11 days because that's the narrative they try to feed us. Oh, 11 day journey, 11 day journey, when really what the scripture says, 40 years. So what this means is that the children of Yasharal migrated southward out of Mount Sinai, which is here in this approximate region at Mount Jabal al Lals in Western Saudi Arabia. So they wandered through the Sahara in this region of Northern Africa. 
And according to witnesses from scripture, along with the witnesses of the cartographers themselves with the 1593 map showing a giant in this region and the men eaters within the region, along with the nation of Agog that's shown on tons of maps from the 1500s and 1600s, we know that they encountered giants such as Agog and the Amalekites on their way in Central Africa towards the Congo, Angola, Zambia, and Mozambique before finally arriving to the promised land in southern Africa as we know it today. And excuse the timestamp because I'm actually quoting from the actual video in the documentary itself, this time with narration. But you see that then they arrived in this region over here for a journey that would have taken 40 years. Now, later on in the video, we will also go over regions such as Babylon and Zion and places like that. And the reason is so that we can get a better idea and start to see scripture with locations being in Africa, because this is going to help us and give us a better idea of where scriptural locations could have taken place and pinpoint these said locations. Now, another possibility to note that we really hadn't noted previously is Telarod, which is in southern Israel, the fake one that we know today. And could that be a potential location? Well, the only thing about that, as we have talked about in the documentary, is our creator Yahua does not give his praise to idols. So again, how can any of that region be the true land when that fake land is named after not one, not two, but three pagan deities and gives praise to graven images. Not only that, but Tel Aviv itself is one of the highest places in the world of homosexuality. And mind you, that's worldwide. So again, how in the world could that land, could any of that place be the true scriptural location? And on top of that, we have to note the size of the region and how small it is compared to Southern Africa. And again, these are just some questions to think about and some questions to ponder on because again, when we ask serious questions, that's where we find some serious answers. But we've gone over this map too that shows Jerusalem and right to the east of it is abandoned Bethesda. And then we quoted Yahukanan, John chapter 5, verses 1 through 2, about Yahusha being in Jerusalem along with what? Bethesda or Bayathzatha that was nearby. And then we showed you this map right here that was map number five of Jerusalem right here from 1880 with Bethesda over here again once again abandoned so you see how they're not too far from one another. Now again, based on research so far, we've been able to find a good 16 maps that have Jerusalem located on it. Although there could potentially be even more. So again, we just have to continue to research and dig deeper. You see Pella right here, and then this is Kleine Pella, which means small Pella. That's right over here to the left. And then we noted in a few other maps throughout the video how this region is filled with pools and fountains all over the place. So you see the pools. This is a map from 1851 that's located in about the same region, actually. And then this map right here from 1864, you see we're in the same region. You see pools over here. You see fountains over there. You see the Jordan right here. And again, what we're looking for and what we're trying to go for right now is scriptural matches. That is the whole purpose of this. And if there are scriptural matches, well, then like the saying goes, if it walks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, then it is a duck. Because you see jackals right here, lions mentioned right there. That sounds very scriptural to me. That's why we also went over and covered all of the different scriptural animals. And when you look at that and take a look at the accounts of Adam naming all of the animals and then Noah with nuke Noah's Ark you'll see that what there's only one location in the world that matches this along with other scriptural prophecies like the real chosen people of scripture being scattered throughout the four corners of the earth well four corners when you look at Africa itself you'll see that if you look at it and it goes in four different directions throughout the other major continents of the world with historic accounts to prove this also but you do not see that in places like south america you do not see that in places like the philippines that is not the case 
And then we went over Yahusha or Joshua chapter 10 that talked more about Gibeon specifically and how this was right before the children of Yasharal inherited the land. And then we showed you this map from 1900 that shows Gibeon and Jerusalem. You can see Jerusalem right here and you can see Gibeon that's located up here. And again, all of this is located in the desolate land today. We see how Bethany and Beersheba is noted. And again, Beersheba as it is today, it's a city to this day, fulfilling Genesis chapter 26 with Bethany that's nearby. Again, all of these scriptural locations and regions that's situated in one place. Another map right here shows Jerusalem up here, South Africa down there with Pella right here, not too far. And this is a map from 1890 that shows Jerusalem. According to Yahusha, Joshua chapter 10, not too far from Jerusalem and Gibeon that was in southern Namibia, we saw on ancient maps Jericho and Hebron, and you actually see Hebron on a ton of them. Here's the map from 1900 from George Bacon Transvaal, and you can see right here Jericho and then Hebron. You also see Beersheba and Bethany that's located not too far. This is something I did not mention in the documentary, but isn't it interesting how you also see a town called Saul right there? Very interesting. Not only that, but it's right near the capital, well, one of the capitals of so-called South Africa today, which is Pretoria also known as Shwani, but you can see Jericho right here in Hebron. Again, these locations are not that far from each other. Now, strong evidence supporting the real scriptural location being in the Southern Africa region is right here actually with Gibeon as a witness because we noted in the documentary how Gibeon itself is not only a town in Namibia, but it's also a town that's interestingly known for meteorites so-called claimed to have landed there in what they call prehistoric times millions of years ago. But as we've noted in the video and even in previous videos before, those meteorites and just meteorites so-called that you hear about are actually large hailstones that scripture speaks about. This is another way that your government and your satanic elite tried to play cover up and hide the true evidence is by saying, oh, that they're actually meteorites from so-called outer space that fell millions and millions of years ago. When really they are not meteorites, they're not from outer space, they're actually the large hailstones that scripture talks about in Yahusha Joshua chapter 10 confirms this with Gibeon and those large hailstones in that region. So again, we have archaeological evidence that supports southern Africa as well. So again, that's what these large rocks are, what that they call meteorites. They're actually large hailstones. You can actually find them and you'll see them today in so-called Namibia and the Gibeon region and along with Windhoek and a few other regions that they now have on display. Those rocks are actually only a few thousand years old and they're the large hailstones of scripture. Another thing that we noted and talked about is Yahusha Joshua chapter 18 when it comes to some of the cities of Yasharal, when it comes to the tribe of Banyamayan or Benjamin as it's commonly known. And you'll see that one of them is Jericho and as well as Bethal or commonly known as Bethel, Gibeon and Ramah being on the list too. Now this is a map from 1905 and actually this map is very important and very significant for a few reasons but one of the reasons is because if you look at this map carefully you'll see Jericho right here, Hebron listed once again, you'll see Jordan right there and there's Bethel or Bethal that's listed over there and it's right near Pretoria and Johannesburg over here. And once again, there's Saul listed up here. So this region is filled with scriptural towns and locations that, that's listed on the map. And not only that, you also see Bethany that's right here that's not too far. And the arrow is actually in the way. But if you take the arrow out, you'll see Beersheba that's listed right below it. 
And again, if you would like, you can pause the video at any time to be able to see the map for yourself. Also, these maps are linked in the description box below. Now, that's another thing I need to mention to everyone, as I mentioned in the comment box on the documentary. If you're looking at this map or if you're watching this video on the phone, and if you go to the description box and click on see more so that you're able to and have access to all of the maps that's listed and linked in the description box, well, in order to to see the maps from Jerusalem, you have to view from a computer as some of the maps will not show from a phone. So once again, if you're watching this video on a phone or the documentary on a phone and you try to click on some of the maps of Jerusalem, they will not show up. You have to be on a computer. Right now, I don't know how to fix that when it comes to seeing it on the phone. It might just be that's how the website is configured. I really don't know, but I do know that it will show up if you look at it on a computer as opposed to a phone for some of the maps of Jerusalem. So now keep this map in mind from 1905 because you're going to see why it's so important as the documentary also showed. But when it comes to scriptural locations, we also went over something else about the tribe of Reuben and how Reuben was even shown on a few of these maps. Now here is Reuben shown in a map from 1893. You can see Reuben right here and it's shown near Lesotho in that region which is right in the country situated in between so-called South Africa. Now what's very important about that is that notice how this is a very mountainous region and a mountainous area if you actually look it up. Now we found a few other maps that show Reuben, but from the video itself, from another map from 1899, here's Reuben over here, again towards the southeastern part of Basutolan, and Basutolan today is known as Lesotho. There's Reuben over there, you see the mountain over here, you see these mountains right here, the Kwathlamba Mountains over there in that region, and then it also shows Bethesda over here, Shiloh right here, Herman over here, and this is within Lesotho today, there's Herman, and then there's Mariah right there, and then there's also Berea right here too. Could this be the Berea that's talked about in Acts chapter 17 verses 10 through 13 with all these other scriptural names and locations that's nearby along with Reuben to denote and indicate the tribe of Reuben? Very interesting and suspicious indeed. Not only that, but it's near the capital of Lesotho, which is Masaru today. And again, like we told you, the map from 1905 is so important is because it shows Jerusalem on this map too. Now, this is the only map found so far that shows Jerusalem, Jericho, and Jordan all together. So if you go further westward, you'll see Jerusalem right here over in this region towards the west and southern Namibia. Now a few maps, not all of them, but a few of them did show Jerusalem with Samson nearby, which what could that mean and indicate? And then Elias right here, which of course is short for al Yahu or another name for Elijah, and then Pella over here. Going back to Yahusha, Joshua chapter 18, when it comes to the cities of Benjamin, we also noted Ramah there as one of them in verse 25, along with Gibeon. Well, you actually see Ramah on an ancient map right here towards the Lesotho region over here with Moriah not too far away. We also noted places such as Gaza and Goshen, and in this map from 1887, you see a region called Goshen over there. Now note also how you see places like Jacob's Doll, Jacob, along with gold. And then on the same map showing Goshen, it also shows Jerusalem over here, which is also what we've noted. Now the earliest map that we found so far was from 1854 and this map right here shows Jerusalem or Vredeburg right there. Now in the actual documentary we've noted how Vredeburg in Dutch means peaceful mountain in the English which is interesting because Jerusalem means what the foundation of Shalom or peace. 
And again, pay careful attention to the region too, because this region is near what? It's near the Kalahari Desert. And we've noted how the Kalahari Desert, well, is pretty much filled with shalom and peace. There's little to no wars that go on in that region, huh? What is that trying to tell us? Not only that, but in the prophecy of Leviticus 26, where it talks about enemies who dwell there will be astonished at the land. Could that be talking about safaris? And not only that, but another other verse that you hear that's common is in Luke 21 24 where it says Jerusalem will be trampled over by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Well, could that be talking about the Gentiles that are dwelling in so-called South Africa along with Namibia there too, who are going on safaris and literally trampling over the land like we've talked about in the documentary when it comes to apartheid, how they went there in order to hide the names and places of scriptural regions, hide the artifacts, burn original maps, and then go to these certain places and only allow the Europeans in in order to keep everyone else out while starting their fraudulent nation of Israel. Could that be talking about that prophecy and then the fulfillment of said prophecy, of course, now knowing the truth because the truth is what makes us free. Again, these are just things to think about, and that's something else to think about when we're on this search for the truth, because again, like the word says, other nations will be dwelling in our land today, and so far, Southern Africa is the only place and the only region really in Africa that really comes close to this. Now we see Samson again in Jerusalem in another map right here from 1893, and you see Pella over here. The 13th map comes from George Bacon's large print map of the Transvaal and Orange Free State all the way back from 1900. And in this map, you see the Orange River, you see Pella just below it, and you see Jerusalem that's right above. Now, this was the 14th map shown in the documentary itself. It comes from 1912, and it shows Jerusalem right here. Now, so far, based on our research, this is the latest so far. The earliest was found in 1854, and the latest in 1912 when it comes to Jerusalem specifically. And again, we noted the timing of that because in 1913 onward, that's when they started passing those land acts in so-called South Africa having to do with leading up to apartheid. And again, what were they really doing with that? That's something we have to pay attention to when it comes to land expropriation. Again, prophecy right before our eyes. Although this map is blurry, it shows Jerusalem from 1894 right here, and then it shows different places like Beersheba over here, Bethany right there. It shows Rehoboth up here with Gibeon that's right here. That's not too far from it. All of this is in Namibia. And then towards South Africa, you see Bethlehem over there. If you look very closely, you'll be able to see Hebron that's located not too far, like right in between them. And then this map from 1858 that shows Jerusalem and Bethany right there. And then we noted some verses in Mark that also talk about Bethany as what? The hometown of Lazarus and Mariam and then Pella over here. But this is a very important map also from 1858 because towards the east of it. So here's Jerusalem up here and Pella down here. But if you go towards the east, it also shows a town or a river called Nero. Now, why would it show Nero on this map? Again, Roman occupation. And we also related that to Pella as being one of the Decapolis cities that the Yaudium fled to right after Roman persecution when Jerusalem was destroyed as of 70 AD. Now, another interesting thing to note about about this region is this right here, Griqua, because towards Botswana, you will see that it was called Griqua land at one point, but Griqua, that sounds like Greek. Could it have been Greek occupation in this area too? Now, those were all of the locations showing Jerusalem for the map so far, but then we also noticed some other regions that show right here, Bethlehem up here, and then we also have Mount Moriah up here. Now, this map is very important because it comes from the Castle Line map, and this is towards eastern South Africa and Lesotho. You see that it has Giant's Castle. Why is that listed right there? It also has Mount of Sources that's listed right here towards a mountainous region of Basutoland, which is listed 
Lesotho today. Mariah is also listed here. There's Bethesda once again. Now what's another thing that's interesting to note is over here you see what's called Abraham's Crawl. Abraham? Why all of these scriptural names of these scriptural towns in this one region? There's something interesting about it. And then throughout the documentary, we also noted places such as Philadelphia and Mamre that's also listed and named along with Cana Land, Canaan, Eden District. This 1897 map from Rand McNally shows you both Mamre right here, but it also shows Saren, and we noted how this is what Sharon or Sharoon right there. Now this is towards the southwestern part of South Africa, so just a little bit north of Cape Town. And now you also see right here Jacob's Cove. Now this map shows a lot of good stuff actually. It's from 1901, but you can see right here it shows in central South Africa, it shows Peniel. Could that be the location right there of the real Peniel? You see towns like Mo or places like Moses listed, Jacob listed, uh, Jacob again, David's Graf, David right there, and that means David's grave. What is that really talking about? What are they really trying to locate? Not only that, but then you see Hebrew Ron up here, a moss right there, and we've gone over a moss in the documentary also. And then right here, you have Daniel's Cool. Now, if you take a look at some of the maps throughout history, you'll see that this region is listed, Daniel's Cool. And we also noted in the documentary how this is actually uh, the name of a town today in so called South Africa. Now, the word cool can mean pit or cave. Could this be the location of Daniel's Den that's talked about in scripture? And we also noted a few locations of ancient maps that show Mount Babylon and Babel's Tower nearby, too. Could that have been, again, Babylon? occupation. Now another map from 1880 shows Job right here. Could this be the scriptural location of where Job was actually? And then also we have Bethlehem, Beersheba, Carmel is listed right here. And again, the Giants part two. And this is around the southeastern side of South Africa with Lesotho not too far. Now, we also talked about and noted, too, the town of Galilee, and we see Galilee in this region towards Angola that's right below the Congo, and then Nazareth, of course, in Gabon up here, and we also mentioned Agog in this region, Herod, Herod in this region in South Central Africa. And then we went over the land of Ophir, how the regions known today as Zambia, Zimbabwe, and Mozambique is said to be the supposed region of the ancient land of Ophir. And we've gone over actual ancient recorded documents of ancient books and carvings and findings of this region known as Great Zimbabwe that will show you and will tell you of actual documented accounts with multiple witnesses that will actually confirm and tell you that this region is is the scriptural Ophir, but as we've also gone over in the video, is the scriptural Tarshish, along with Havilah, not too far. Not to mention the land of Punt, as they also found an Egyptian sarcophagus not too far, as we've also talked about in the video with multiple sources and witnesses. And then towards the end of the documentary, we talked about regions such as Zion and Babylon. Now, it's so important to know where scriptural Babylon is because when we know that, then we have an idea of some of the other places in scripture. But here we showed you a 1525 map that's nearly 500 years old. You see Babylon right there along with media right here too. Now, upon further research, we also found media and actually in the 1507 map, here is the 1507 map right here from Martin Waldse Müller, and as you can see, media is listed right here. Now, this map was not shown in the documentary. However, after further research, you see media right here. You see Moreau, Sudan right there, located along and near the Nile River.
This map from 1706 right here shows Babylon that's located around the Sudan region near Moro, Sudan, as we've gone over and talked about in the documentary itself. And again, it's very important for Babylon to be along the Nile River because, again, it gets rid of the myth and it gets rid of the lies that your mainstream has been telling you about scriptural Babylon being in Iraq and the Tigris and Euphrates rivers when they're actually not there. They're right along the Nile right here here in Sudan today. We also showed you the truth about the land of Shinar that's talked about in Brashia through Genesis chapter 10. And we showed you this map, how Shinar is actually Sinar in the Greek. And this is a map from 1806 that shows you Sinar right here. That's what in Sudan today. And the town is still located there today. But then we also showed you this very important map from cartographer Herman Mall from 1730 and then an earlier version done in 1710. Now the reason these maps are important is because they will identify one of the four Edenic rivers. Now one of them being the Tigris and the Tigris River which is in Abyssinia or known today as Ethiopia. Now here is Sinar which is the land of Shinar. However it shows Susa right there. Why is that so important? Because now we have an idea of where Hadassah the book of Esther really took place. And we also noted how this location is near Media, so we see that it would have taken place around this region in Sudan and Chad along the Nile River. An earlier version right here shows Sinar right there, Susa located right here in Sudan today, as you see right along the Nile River. You see over here that the Tigris is what Ethiopia located along the Nile, so letting us know that the Nile River definitely is one of the scriptural uh, Edenic rivers. And then right here you see Median or Media right here towards the western side towards Chad along with the desert of Seth that's located up here. So based on ancient maps, we know that Babylon is in this region, and actually we found a few more maps that show Babylon that we'll show you in just a moment to come. But we know Babylon is in this region along the Nile River in Sudan and even towards Egypt today on some ancient maps. We see the Tigris region over here in Ethiopia. However, east of Shinar, just like scripture says, is Babal Mandel that's right here, that's right around the area of Djibouti and a Eritrea that connects to Yemen right there so that connects with Arabia right here and we talked about in the video how this is the region of the real Tower of Babel. This map was shown in the documentary, but I did not put the cartographer. It's actually Abraham Ortelius, and it comes from the year 1592. Now, the reason this map is important is because it shows you right here, Babalmelech, which means King or Babel right there. And it's in the region towards uh, southern Sudan, even towards Ethiopia, just right below Djibouti and Eritrea. Here's Babel Mandel that's located right here where the real Tower of Babel occurred. And and then right here you have Medra or Media towards this way towards the west. This map comes from 1597. Now again, the, this map was not shown in the documentary, but it's from 1597. And as you can see, if you scroll right here, you'll see Babylon that's towards the Nile River at the Nile Delta towards Egypt. This is a map from 1712, and if you look very carefully, again, this map was not shown in the documentary, but was found since. And as you can see, here's Babylon right here, located near Memphis around the Egypt region today, along the Nile Delta. But if you keep looking, you see Ammon over here with Ammonis, and then Ammoniaca located towards the west, located in present-day Libya, as we've talked about when it comes to the Ammonites being in this region over over here. And then another map from 1720 that you can see that shows Babylon right here located along the Nile. So we know that the real Babylon is located along the Nile in either Egypt or Sudan, more than likely Sudan.
And because we know that Assyria was not too far away, Assyria definitely has to be located along the Nile also when it comes to these ancient regions. Now where, again, we're still doing more research on that and we'll of course let you know once we continue to find certain things and see certain things along with the real Sodom and Gomorrah because we have a hint. We know that it has to be a place that has to do with craters and we'll talk more about that in a moment to come. But another thing to note is right here with Zion as we've noted in a documentary being in Kenya as it shows in ancient maps and we showed you how it's Mount Kenya today. Now Table Mountain has some significance in what's located in Cape Town today and the reason is for a myriad of reasons like the lion's head. Oh my goodness what are they really trying to tell us? But as you can see right here there's also a range called the 12 Apostles Mountain Range. What are they literally trying to tell us? Now again, this is located in Cape Town today. There is a ton of significance when it comes to this region. We're still doing more research on it, but as we continue to be led by Yahuwah through Yahusha and the Ruk Akadush, or commonly known as the Made Apart Spirit, will definitely share with you whatever else we find. Again, this is only the beginning of more to come. And again, we will continue to share more with you. But another thing I found that's interesting to note is this right here, because remember we talked about craters. This is something that's definitely important to pay attention to when it comes to searching the ancient maps and stuff and scriptural locations is crater. Because anything that was affected by a crater or wiped out by a crater, we know is really was wiped out by what? Fire and brimstone along with what? Large hailstones. That's what that is. Now it's interesting how this is called Rita Fort Crater because again the word Rita means what? Peaceful. And we can ignore the lies that they tell us of oh being a million billions of years old. No it is not that. But what's interesting note the area of this. Again this is something that we're doing more research and studies on but I just wanted to share it with you right now. You can see right here how it's in the region towards uh, South Africa towards the capital actually Pretoria and maybe even Johannesburg in the free state around that area. But you'll see that ancient maps have Jerusalem over here in this region region over there and then the crater hit over here so again could that be a correlation that's just something to note but again as we continue to be led with everything with research we will of course share it with you but one of the last things that we shared and we'll share it here again that we showed you in the documentary is this blank map of Africa showing you the restored locations and their approximations of where they would be today and the nations that they would be and comprise of today now we have Egypt over here but then we have Ammon right here which is Libya of the Ammonites and then we saw Shinar and Susa located around Sudan today we saw Babylon that's actually in Egypt and in Sudan and towards Eritrea and even as southward towards Ethiopia and then we saw media that's right next to Babylon actually towards Chad Niger and the Cameroon if not in Sudan also then we had Nazareth that was towards the Gabon we also had Mount Zion in Kenya Ophir shown near Zimbabwe in that region then we showed you Agag that's in Central Africa towards the Congo and Angola with Galilee towards Angola also along with Zambia possibly too. Then we showed you Jerusalem in Southern Africa with Yasharal, the land of Canaan being in places such as Lesotho, Swaziland, Namibia, Botswana, South Africa in this region towards the sea over here. Now, although I did not note these places in this map, I'll note them here today, but Mount Sinai would be, of course, in western Saudi Arabia over here in this region. The land of Punt would be over here towards Zimbabwe near Ophir. Tarshish, the scriptural Tarshish, would be in Mozambique towards Safala and Baira, Mozambique at the coastline of Mozambique, along with Gaza over here, as we've noted in the documentary. Herod would be towards this area of Angola over here towards the central area, the south central part of Africa, and then the Tigris, the river that we saw, that region would be towards Ethiopia over here. 
But again, folks, this is only the beginning, and I pray that as we continue to seek Yahuwah and his true son, Yahusha, and be led by the Rook of Truth, because the Rook of Truth will lead us into all truth. But prayerfully, this video is helping. Prayerfully, this video was helpful. And like I said, prayerfully, we'll be doing even more videos covering the true scriptural locations. And as we continue to find more things and search and seek new things, then we'll share them with you on the channel here. But this is Truth Unveiled here, saying as always, Shalom.